Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. This is a series of videos running right the way through 2017. We're almost at the halfway mark now. And today we're going to be looking at grid systems. Now, a lot of designers say, oh, I don't like working with the grid. It, it, it annoys me. Uh, and actually, unfortunately, when you question them, they're, they're not entirely sure what the grid is. It's stuff they don't like it. Um, there are basically uh, four approaches to layout. Uh, approach number one is, is the kind of naive, stick stuff on the page, hope it looks okay. Uh, and that's what most people who start with Word do. Uh, and you just you know, type away, put a box in, uh, go with Word's default formatting because uh, that's easier and only change it if you have to. The second approach is what I call the harmonic approach where you uh, you set your, your, your style sheets for typography. We looked at style sheets a few weeks ago. Uh, and you've got a harmonic series. So you've got maybe 11 point, 12 point, 14 point, 18 point, 24 point, 36 point, 48 point, which, which go up that way. And then using titles and subtitles and so on, uh, proportionately, your text is going to come out looking nice and that's a, a typographic layout where you're not involving much in the way of pictures and that can create a, a, a very nice layout. Then you've got the third method um, which uh, are called the organic method and that's where you, you for, particularly for an advertisement, you start with a picture. Uh, I've got this beautiful picture of a bonfire and uh, if you put bonfire night beside it, that's a British thing, bonfire night uh, and, and a couple of other things, uh, really the, the shape of the picture is going to be telling you where everything's going to go. There's, there's no point using anything but the shape of the main graphic elements to determine what's happening in the document. But the, the final method, which is probably the most important method if you are publishing rather than just doing the occasional layout, is the grid method. And it's sometimes called the Swiss method. For the organic method, I would probably call the Dutch method. Um, uh, and the typographic method I would call the English method and the uh, uh, just stick stuff in and hope it turns out right will not give a name to that but the, what's called the Swiss method or, 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 or the grid method is, is this you create a grid and you then uh, put everything inside that grid so let's go to the screen and here I've got a, a Quark Express document and I'm going to go to master pages I'm going to go to page layout um, okay, that was already open. I'm going to open it again. And I go to my master page. And at the moment, I've got, look, these column guides. Well, let's get rid of those for a moment. So I'm going to go to, to page, master guides and grid. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to have one column. And now I'm going to do my margins this way. Uh, the bottom margin, I'm going to make 30. Uh, the top margin, I'm going to make 15. The inside margin... I'm going to make 20, and the outside margin, I'm going to make 10. Um, now, uh, I wouldn't usually those, use those particular numbers uh, because uh, I, I work things out slightly differently using the golden section. But um, what I tend to do is have a bottom margin of three units, an outside margin of one unit, and the inside of two units, and the top of one and a half units. And that's going to give a, a better rhythm to the page than just having everything the same all, all the way around. Now I've got these blank pages. Now I'm going to go to uh, guides. Um, so you might be confused that it's got grid styles as well. Um, I, I'm not going to be using grid styles. You can use them. That's for a typographic grid where everything is set to lock down to uh, the, the grid in the way that an old fashioned printer would when they were gridding out letters. Uh, and that again, is a different way of doing layout. Uh, and if you're used to doing that, that's great. I don't do it myself. But I'm going to go to the guides instead. And on the guides, uh, inconspicuously, um, over here you've got this, this menu. Um, uh, and um, we're going to do, you can do create grid, or you can do create rows and columns. Now, if we go to create grid, it, it literally creates lines on the page uh, and uh, let's just preview those um, and you can see 
how that happens. And that's quite a strict grid. I, I think uh, uh, no matter how Swiss you were, uh, that would be a little bit too strict for you. So cancel that. Instead, we're going to go uh, back to that menu. So in the top right hand side of the guides uh, and um, we're going to do create rows and columns. So uh, over here, I've got a uh, page boundary or margin. So I'll just turn preview on so you can see what we're doing. And again, you could do page boundary, but that would be a really, really over strict interpretation of gridding. I would put them between the margins and I would typically have five rows and five columns with a gutter, which is a half of my margin units. I'm going to have five millimeters. So remember that unit was 10 millimeters, not quite the one I would, I would usually use, um, but uh, uh, one which is, is helpful for this particular task. Um, and I'm going to do this on all pages, not just uh, my left page. And because I've done this on the master page, this will now be available on every page throughout the document. Now, uh, what is the point of this? Because you're thinking, we learned uh, a few weeks ago that uh, text should be in lines of uh, nine to 11 words or seven to 13 at a pinch. Uh, and these columns are far too narrow for any kind of decent text. Well, that's because using a grid system, uh, one box does not equal a column. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete these um, uh, master page uh, text boxes, which link together. And I'm going to put in uh, the columns I'm actually going to use. So uh, column one and column two. And that leaves me with a space here, which I can use for other things. Now, I'm sure you've seen uh, magazines, books, uh, articles uh, and journals which uh, use this method of, of two wide columns and one narrow column, or possibly one narrower and one wider column. And you think, well, that looks really good. But, but how does it look really good? Because they're just odd shaped. It, clearly, you can't just type columns in and ask Quark Express or some other package to give you unbalanced columns. How do I know what the correct balancing is? And the answer is you use this underlying grid system. So um, let's go to that page. Uh, now, okay, uh, what we've done is we've taken away. Now we'll, we'll do what we're doing. Um, let's get rid of those for a second um, because we don't need those. What we're going to do is we're going to create on that page uh, our layout um, uh, using only the grid. So this is the title. Um, we'll spell it correctly. Uh, and we're going to do uh, just expand that text using the keyboard. Um, and now we're going to put, uh, let's say, a picture in. So let me pull a picture in from somewhere. Um, doesn't matter what that is. Um, it will have that. Uh, and in the grid, that picture box, well, actually the picture itself, must be an exact number of these boxes. So um, I can have it like that, but I need to fill it if I'm going to do that. So that would be that. Or I could have it as two boxes, uh, in which case um, I'm going to fill it like that. Uh, I can have it as three boxes. Um, just pull that across. Uh, I can have it as uh, the whole width of the page up to that margin, uh, pulling it that way. Um, might want to do a little bit. This is a picture shot with a fisheye lens, one of my, my favorite lenses for the right applications. Um, F7. And OK, on a single page, using a grid to determine uh, what's happening, uh, well, it'll look no better or worse than the grid you used. Uh, but when you're doing an entire document, or a series of documents for a brand. I'm just going to link those together there uh, and uh, so make it a text box. I'm going to put some placeholder text in there. Uh, when you run that through for an entire document, um, uh, uh, let's do um, oh. 
then suddenly stuff starts looking very, very consistent, but also varied from page to page. So as long as you stick with the grid, um, then your document will always be consistent, even if every single page looks entirely different. And if you look at well-designed magazines, they're often designed to a, a quite a, a tight grid. So it might be uh, seven by uh, nine. Uh, usually odd numbers are better for, for whatever reason. And it just gives this whole impression that um, uh, it, it's, it's very organic, it's very together, and it's, yet it's different than every page. Um, not everybody likes working to grids. Uh, and I've got to say that for years and years and years, I resisted the grid. And I said, no, I'm, I'm going to create my margins. I'm going to do my typographic layout. I am British. We're going to do the English way, uh, letting the typefaces decide what the, the proportions will be. But since I started working with grids, I found that it was much easier to create consistent, attractive layouts. Now, not all grids will look equally good. So the proportions of the page uh, if they reflect in the proportions of the grid, will be more harmonious. And if, if the proportions of the page jar with the proportions of the grid, it'll never look quite right. So it might be consistently bad, which I suppose is, is better than being sometimes bad and sometimes good, or just sometimes bad, but in different ways. But if you work hard on, on shaping your page, what I'd advise everyone to do is first sketch out with a pen and a piece of paper what the page should look like, and then work out what grid that is part of, even if it's a nine column grid, even if you've got to go quite fine, what grid will work for that? And then create your master page using that grid. And then maybe if you want to have uh, several master pages so that you can do different versions of the grid quite quickly, do that. Or otherwise, on every single page, create the page using the grid. You can't go wrong as long as you stick to the grid. And as long as you make sure that the visual elements are in the grid, so it, it's not the boxes on the page. If you've got a, a, a Quark Express uh, picture, let's, let's just fit that to box. Um, uh, I rotated that. If you've got a Quark Express picture, uh, the box may be the right size, but uh, here on the screen, um, but the, um, uh, the, the, the actual visual element isn't the right size because uh, it's only the visuals you can see. You, you, people can't see the box. So, so make sure you're working with what people can see. And again, um, although I'll put things in using uh, with the guidelines on, so using F7 to turn them on, when I start looking at it again, uh, I'm going to turn the guidelines off to make sure that nothing is, I'm not being fooled by the shape of the boxes. Um, so there's one more thing I want to talk about with grids and guidelines, because we mentioned this before, but while we're here, let's do it. And that is, uh, bleed and safety. So uh, over here on the guidelines palette, uh, you've got create bleed and safety guides. We talked about this before, but but I just want to refresh it. Typically, uh, three millimeters, that's 8.5 points of bleed. So the pictures that run to the edge of the page have got to run three millimeters over the page because when it's, it's printed and cut, it's never quite exact. And the same thing for safety. Don't put anything uh, closer than three millimeters from the margin, it might get chopped off. Um, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching with us. Uh, my name's Martin Turner. This is Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. You can get the book of the same name from Amazon uh, or from your local retailer. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.